Xavi took over as manager of FC Barcelona just over a week ago, and it has felt like an eternity waiting for that first match. Like you, I'm racking my brain trying to figure out what the new man will do. The injury crisis means that we'll have to wait a while for the ideal 11, if he even chooses one. But with even the players on hand, we won't see that grand vision. That said, I again cannot wait to see what he has in store for Espanyol. His tactics for one match likely won't be what he wants to do for the long run, but it could give a little glimpse of what we could see in the future. So today we're talking Xavi's tactics, what we know about his philosophies, what we saw at Al Saad, what he has in store for Barcelona in the long run, and what players might be central to his vision. I myself am trying a few new things with this video, so it'd be a big help if you give us a like, and make sure you leave a comment that you want to see more content like this down below. So let's get started and start with the simple stuff. There are plenty of reports that indicate that Xavi wants to be a bit more meticulous with the player's time, and that means a whole new set of rules. Now, PK on Twitch has taken some of the credibility away from this list, but I think what Xavi or these reports are leading towards is that Xavi is going to be a bit more thoughtful about the tactics and the kinds of training that are done for this team. Yet the apparent rules, or should we say changes in place, are as follows. Players must be 90 minutes early to practice, staff must be two hours early to practice, players must eat at the training ground, fines will be doubled for repeat offenses as players will be fined for breaking rules, the curfew is 48 hours before a game, there is a meritocracy as to who will play on the field, there is travel and off-field habits that will be monitored, players are prohibited from dangerous activities, and players must maintain a good image. If those new guidelines are true and the players follow them, I could see some players being a bit healthier in the long run, and I think it will improve the team on the margins. But if you really want a fix of this squad, it's going to come down to the tactics. And Xavi's tactics will start with one simple philosophy and a familiar philosophy. He wants his team to control the ball and have possession. And with that as a central theme to his philosophy, it's going to indicate how he wants to set up this team. He wants his team to attack with the ball, not just have the ball to have the ball, but actually use that possession to attack. Whether he tries to employ it right away, or maybe it's what he wants to do in the long run, Xavi has indicated that he desires to play a 3-4-3 system, with three defenders, two defensive midfielders, two interiors, two wide attackers, and one center forward. With the wide attackers having to stay as wide as possible, something that we haven't seen from MC Barcelona for at least the last four to five years. Paramount to this system is creating squares with those interiors, as in turn the opposition into squares, setting up between the fullback, the center back, and the wide or inside midfielders on the opposing team. That doesn't really change if the opposition is playing a 4-4-2 or 4-3-3. The other interior should be in the same spot on the other side as you see two different squares. And the key to positioning these interiors is finding the numerical superiority. That's positional play in a nutshell. The three center backs at the back always need to outnumber the forwards around them, and that's how not to get beat on the counter. Xavi wants his team to always be looking for the free man. Wingers must stay wide and occupy those fullbacks so that the center forward can occupy the two center backs, and that means that there's a numerical advantage somewhere behind. This is Xavi's recipe to breaking a high press from the opposition. He's willing to drop two center backs near the keeper and one pivot out wide. That leaves the other pivot as the free man, and in theory, becomes a rondo. If that other pivot is covered, that means one of the interiors would be the free man, and so on and so forth up the field. And what will Xavi do to beat a low block, whether that's 4 or 5 at the back? It does look an awful lot like a 4-3-3. So that comes against a low block. Interiors must be high between the midfield and back line, and those interiors may have plenty of opportunities to shoot. The goal against this low block is to create plenty of opportunity in the half spaces between the center backs in the low block. Create numerical superiorities on the wings between a fullback and the winger so that the attacking midfielder can either get in behind or a 1v1 is available for the center forward. And against a low block, in a 4-3-3 in particular, that means that Xavi wants his team to press, and press in a way that Barcelona has not done in quite a few years. The interior opposite the number 9 must be the one who presses, so the pivot presses in behind him. That means the center back, not contending with the opposing center forward, must be alert to the open man for the opposition. That's where it'll be dicey for Barcelona's center backs. If you need Araujo to stay with the opposing center forward because of that potential foot race, then which of Pique, Garcia, Lenglet, Umtiti, or even Mingueza are you trusting to read the moment and be able to stop the free man in the middle of the field on that counterattack? 
They have to win the duel, and they have to win back possession. Everyone must be positioned one meter in front of the opposing player to win the ball back on duels. And while it sounds like I've been talking a lot about the wingers, the interiors, and the defenders in those systems, whether it's a 3-4-3 or the 4-3-3, the thing I keep coming back to when listening to Xavi speak about who needs to make the decisions on the field and control these games, it comes down to his one or two pivots. Everything surrounds and revolves around them. Let's take a look at some of the different lineups, whether it's the ideal 11 that I think Xavi will pick down the road. Again, I'm going out on a limb here. And then there's also a pressing 4-3-3, which we could see against a low block this season. So clearly from Xavi's ideal 11 that I'm thinking, Busquets and De Jong are the keys. And how well Xavi can get the best out of them is how far Barcelona might go this season. But there are plenty of other players that Xavi's going to be looking at for the first time. Some with, I think, no chance to feature on the Xavi, some on the fringes, and some young players that could break into the first team for the first time. So let's take a look at some of those players now, starting with those who I think might not have a chance under Xavi. Let's start with Coutinho, because it would make sense in that 3-4-3 that he could occupy that left interior spot. But that's simply because he cannot play on Xavi's left wing. So I do worry about Coutinho, not even past January, I think he'll be in the squad into the summertime. But I can't imagine that the Brazilian is too long for FC Barcelona under Xavi. The other one is Luke de Jong, with his loan might be getting cut short in January. Sevilla said they aren't looking to take him back, but they might not have a choice if Barcelona decides to cut the loan. I just don't see how Xavi will play him with the limits he has on the press, and with the intensity and focus in which those center forwards have to make sure they're contending with the center backs on the other team. So I only had two players in the no chance category, but for the last chance, there are a few names that I think Xavi will take a hard look at not even until January, but as I said, for the next six or seven months until that transfer window opens in the summertime. And we begin that list with Samuel Umtiti. Umtiti has an ability to play the ball and break lines of this passing. We've always known what he is, but defensively, he does have limitations with the way his knees are working now, as in they're not working very well. But if Xavi can somehow find a way to keep him healthy and get him back defending to somewhere near, I'm not saying we're ever going to see Umtiti at the 2018 World Cup, but if Xavi can get Umtiti somewhere back to his former defending glory, his ability to play the ball has not changed, has not gotten any worse. And I think for Barcelona that wants to keep possession, Umtiti might have a role to play. Ricky Puj, who played under Setien, not really under Valverde or Koeman, is now 22 years old, and with all the competition in midfield, it doesn't say anything about Ricky Puj and his quality. It's just there's so much competition in the midfield, he's going to have to impress Xavi. And with the system that Xavi wants to play, you'd think that there's a role for Ricky Puj. So if he cannot impress in a system that seems to fit some of his strengths, then he's not going to have a chance at FC Barcelona. Similar to Umtiti, Clement Langley has Xavi asking for a left-footed center back, which doesn't say a lot about Langley. I've said for a long time that his ability to play the long ball doesn't really impress me. I think he's actually improved in his time for FC Barcelona. He's getting better at it, but I just don't think it's going to be up to the standard that Xavi's going to want. So I think that the club is going to continue to have him out on the market. And finally, last chance, Yusuf Demir. It's unfortunately already the last chance for him because Barca hasn't paid the 10 million euros to make his loan permanent. I'm not sure how guaranteed that was. And it's so weird that he was supposed to be with Barca B and then probably bought. But now getting the 11 shirt with the first team might be what keeps him from being with Barca long term. Just a lot of bad luck for the Austrian. So that's four for last chance. Now I have four more for the fringe players. Who I think could either be out by the summertime or completely out of the squad up in the stands in March and April and May. Or they could be key pieces of what Xavi's looking to do in his new Barcelona. And the biggest name on that list and the biggest name on this fringe list is one of the four captains. It's Sergio Roberto. Seems like he might be getting a contract renewal, which could drastically lower his salary and could see his versatility of being a passing center back as a third center back or as a midfielder in one of those two pivot spots. He could wind up being a rotation piece for Xavi. And what about another one of those right backs from the glory years, Danny Alves? Xavi approved this transfer for a reason. Was that for him to be a mentor and play three times from January to June? He will be registered wearing the number eight and likely could potentially even take someone's spot in a 25-man squad if somebody else can find their way in in January. And if Danny Alves winds up doing what Xavi asks, we could see a lot of the 38-year-old Brazilian. A player that we won't probably see for Barcelona come January to June, but could feature in 2022, it's Alex Callado. And speaking of those squad spots, someone can let me know in the comments if he can be registered somehow in January, as long as someone else is unregistered, which would probably be Aguero due to his long-term issues. 
potentially Brothwaite depending on his injury situation, but I think he should be healthy sometime in the spring and keep his registration. Back to Callado though, he's not a wide winger though on that right side. So I wonder if he's not just a backup right interior for Xavi. I don't know where else Callado would be comfortable. Rounding out this list of fringe players is another Catalan, Oscar Mangaitha. I could see Xavi not really being in love with his habit of taking risks, but I actually think Xavi may see him as a center back instead of an outside back. The lunges and risks he takes are the kind that Xavi wants from his secondary center back, and not from his outside backs in his 4-3-3. If Roberto does renew, how does Mangaitha possibly move above him on the depth chart? Unless Dest is completely frozen out, and also Alves being in there too, I do put Mangaitha on the fringes because he still has a lot to prove. And we didn't talk about the Ansu Fadis, the Memphis Dubais, the Ronald Arajos, because they're going to feature for FC Barcelona moving forward under Xavi. This last list we have though is the young players, and I'm not talking about almost any of the players we featured in our Dream Teen video. It's all of the new names that you haven't even heard of yet, which is incredible that Xavi's going to take the time to potentially put even more teenagers into the squad. But I think he might be forced to, especially on that right wing. We said right wing is so important in that system, and Dembele hasn't renewed his contract yet. After Dembele, next up is probably Dest, which isn't ideal because he's not a winger. Then Callado and Demir in the first team, but I already mentioned my fears with both of them as more interiors under Xavi than wingers. So now we're already heading down to the B team. This team is young and all the options are actually older than Gabi. The natural wingers are 19 year old Moroccans, Zacharias Gailan and Abde on the left. Then third division regular 22 year old Ferran Jukla on the right, 20 year old Niels Mertimer, and then we're already down to Juvenil A and some Barca B minutes with 17 year old Ilasha Komash. He's a bit of an inverted winger too. And I did notice that 18 year old right winger from Juvenil A, Juan de Fuentes, was in training as well last week. So that right wing is going to be a question mark, and I would not be surprised if Xavi decides to supersede another player that you might think is in the first team dynamic for a Barca B or even a Juvenil A player that's a more natural fit. The other four names I really think are going to be around the peripheral of the first team, Alvaro Sanz at one of those pivot spots, Arnaud Camas, and Mika Marmol, who's starting to make more news for his good performances with Barca B, basically being the Iron Man for Sergio Barzwan's squad, and he's also a natural left-footed center back. With no offense to Arnold Kamas, but he has a number of right-footed players in front of him at the other center back spot. Marmol, as a left footer, might actually have the inside track to the first team. And Angel Alarcon, I've talked about him a lot. He would be with Barca B right now. He's a natural left winger to a center forward. I think he has a role to play where he can finally get healthy, which he hasn't this season. Some other names to throw at you, Jordi Escobar with Barca B, Peke, the attacking midfielder, Chus Alba, defensive midfielder Mark Casado, and Hunter Oriana when he can also get healthy, as he's currently not fit. Also in training last Thursday with center back Diego Almeida from Juvenil A, Arnau Sola, the left back, center midfielder Alas Garita, also with Juvenil A, and Estanas Pedrola, an 18-year-old right winger who signed from Voice over the summer. And note that that's another right winger and a new name that I don't think Kules have heard just yet because he's a recent signing. I just named a whole lot of teenagers, but that's to say that Xavi is willing to look all the way from the first team down to Juvenil A. He's looking for wingers, he's looking for midfielders, and he's looking for center back. And he's willing to look anywhere he can to find the players that he wants for his system. We did have a bit of fun there at the end talking about the teenagers and some of the future players that Xavi might trust, but more realistically, he's likely just to go with the experienced players that he knows to get the job done and take this team from ninth place back up the table. But if some of this video proves to be right, or none of it at all, the point is that Xavi's going to need to take this team and mold it in his image, not just in the coming weeks, not just in the coming months, but hopefully for the coming years. Not to continue to give myself an out, but we may not see this tactics at all. Or it might take months and months to come to fruition. But the one thing that I am certain after watching this, I do trust the club legend as manager of FC Barcelona, and I'm going to be patient with Xavi as long as I possibly can. And that's not 2021, that's 2022, 2023, and beyond. We need to give him time. Because now it's time for the serious business. Enough wondering. It's time for Xavi to take on his first test at FC Barcelona against Espanyol. So make sure you give this video a like, subscribe, and help this channel out as I am ready for the Xavi era, as are you. Forza Barca!